Digikey and Adafruit bring Present. you Okay, this week, what is this lady? All right, this week, uh, this week's Iron MPI is brought to you by DigiKey. It's now stocking a new dev board from Alorium Tech. She's also a friend of the fruit, but uh, I would have picked this anyway. This is a really we cool know them. board. I do, we do know them. This is, just a side note, we know them. They're doing a feather format thing, and uh, we helped them out with some manufacturing equipment. Yeah. This is like we we're making the feather ecosystem and the things around the feather ecosystem is in itself an ecosystem. It's an ecosystem inside an ecosystem inside an ecosystem. <laughs> no, uh, this is cool. This is our is. first ion MPI that's been that a, a, a feather, feather format. Yeah. Okay, so this right. feather, what's interesting is it's kind of like a, it seems like it's a bit of a collaboration between Intel, which makes the FPGA. Actually, they they bought Altera, which is the company that makes the FPGA, but now it's called like Intel Altera FPGA. And again, this company, Alorium, that does uh, design consulting for FPGA designs. And so one of the things they've done as part of their like consulting services is that they develop dev board hardware that I think helps them with their consulting because it's like they don't have to start over every time with a new board. Um, and also because customers want to get started quickly prototyping with FPGAs. Okay, so here is the INMPI. It is the Evo M51. So... What this is is a, a feather-shaped board. It's, I think it's a little bit longer than a normal feather, maybe 2.1 inches uh, or 2.2 inches by 0 0.9 inches. Um, but it's compatible with all feather wings. Some, some feather-like boards are longer one direction or the other. It's uh, got a micro USB. It's got a JST. It's got power management. It's got a reset button. Uh, and for the microcontroller, it has a SAM D51. And you can see that kind of in the middle left there. It's a smaller BGA chip. So it's kind of like the Feather M4 Express. And then, this is all on like a single-sided board, which is amazing. They also shoved on there like a massive uh, FPGA from Altera. I think this is a 25K LUT uh, Max 10 FPGA board, uh, FPGA chip. They also have a Stemma connector, NeoPixel on the right, and uh, looks like some debug pads on the bottom. And what's interesting, um, and you can see in these photos, and I'll show also on the overhead, is the plain GPIOs on the 0.1 inch header are connected to the SAM51, and you use those with Arduino as usual. You, you can use their SAM D51 development uh, uh, board support package, which I think is probably based off of ours, because I don't know of any other SAM D51 uh, development uh, board support packages. But then all the castellated pads that are kind of in between are connected to the FPGA. And uh, the FPGA is connected to the SAM51. So the SAM51 can be used to program the FPGA. You can load, you know, your, whatever they're called, binaries onto the FPGA. Uh, it's connected through I squared C, so for probably configuration and setup, and then a 10-bit parallel bus, so you can use that to shove data back and forth. And there's also the F port, which I actually don't know exactly what that is. Um, and I think that's just the um, FPGA this GPIO port, you can connect that as well for, for a non-parallel bus, maybe for like control signals and stuff. Um, and then the other pins are again brought out to the um, pads on the outside, and I'll show you how you can actually connect to those pads in a little bit. Um, so what's neat about this board is it combines one of my favorite chips, the SAMD51, which is so capable, with um, an FPGA that uh, is extremely powerful, um, and the SAM D51 can Yay. run CircuitPython or be programmed with Arduino. So again, ecosystem, ecosystem, ecosystem. It's, it's a feather-shaped board. It, we help them with some manufacturing equipment. Yeah. It's an INMPI with DigiKey. It's stocked and sold there. And you can program it with CircuitPython. Yes, CircuitPython. Yeah, right now, if you want to talk to the FPGA, I think the example code is in Arduino. But I think they'll, they're going to be porting it to CircuitPython, especially if people bug them and say, hey, really, that's what I want to use this for. Um, and so what's cool about that is you can have the ease of use and quick turnaround of writing code in CircuitPython for like user interface stuff and then you offload computation to the FPGA. So if you want to like, you know, connect to an HDMI display or you want to, get to connect to a camera or you want to do, you know, I don't know, like some weird mathematical calculations that would be too slow on the SAM51, maybe machine learning. Um, uh, calculations, you want to offload that to the FPGA, you can do it. You can also, of course, program the FPGA and it kind of runs standalone, so it doesn't communicate with the, the SAMD51 or something. 
Okay, so then um, the next thing is how do you connect to those pads? Well, they've got this board called um, the EvoTech M51. So let's go to the overhead now because I can I can show this off. The sorry, the Evo tray, um, and then you see here the castellations. So there's the main holes that are used for connecting. You can just like through hole solder them, and then there's castellations here, here. Uh, here and even like a couple of uh, ones over here although these look like they're the USB connection so that's kind of nice that's right next to the USB port and then um, this um, PCB you solder it on and you can uh, just use a little bit of uh, paste or some thin um, solder and you can connect all the uh, castellated pads here and then they're brought out to you know 0.1 inch header um, so what's cool is it's, it's, it's a single-sided board. It's probably a four, six, or eight layer design. Um, it's got everything you love about the Feather M4 Express, plus this gigantic chip. And if you were going to buy this chip, it's also available on DigiKey. It's the exact part number is the um, Altera Max 10, 10 M25 DAF. Um, so this FPGA. Oh, no. Yeah, did you want me to show you no. uh, the, the nope. site with the number at all? Nope. Oh, okay. Because not, I, I can give you that. You want to keep going on that? Yeah. Right. Uh, it, this chip on its own is um, like $80, $85 or something. So the fact that you can get this chip assembled, tested with a SAMD51 programming interface and, you know, c comes with the analog digital and the DAX and the timers and all that that you can use in concert with the FPGA. And it's like under 100 bucks. It's a really good deal. Like you might as well just get this if you're planning on doing any prototyping and even kind of like into s small quantity production. But it's actually just less expensive and a lot easier on a harder designer. Like I don't want to route this BGA. This is like 196 pads. It's ridiculous. Uh, so I'm glad that uh, Alorium has done it instead. So um, the next thing, and now, yeah, let's go to the next. Yeah, did you want to? Show this one? I just showed that. You go to the website. So the next thing is um, also in DigiKey is they have a design integration services registry and you can check that out if you're ever interested in doing like some design and you're kind of hit your limit of what you can do like I can't quite do like the power supply or I can't quite do the, the Wi-Fi certification. They do have a bunch of companies that are registered there um, that you can um, uh, use to uh, uh, chat with them to get um, design help and so Alorium is there so as you're working with the Max 10 you know you get the dev board you work with it and then once you're ready to actually implement the Max 10 into production uh, you can contract with Alorium and they'll help you out okay okay all right and then um, so this is the website in the short URL yes that's yeah. for the dev kit and we'll yeah. show the dev kit um, the design integration services I didn't give you the URL just google for that oh, okay well it's on DigiKit yeah it's fine I mean, it's, okay. it's under like and, design integration and then we have a video yeah let's show the video which is a video cool demo of the board we'll see you on the other side yes the Evo M51 module from Alorium Technology is the next step in the evolution of our FPGA enhanced embedded microcontroller boards Evo features the 32-bit SAMD51 microcontroller along with an Intel Max 10 FPGA EVO conforms to the Adafruit Feather specification for primary pinout, connectivity, and additional key features. Primary Feather-defined I.O. signals are available as plated 0.1-inch through-hole vias, making them very easy to access and solder to standard headers. Since EVO is designed to be an embeddable module, the primary I.O. are also routed to castellated vias along the edge of the board. But we didn't stop there. Since there is plenty of space on the board and many more available I.O. on the FPGA, EVO also provides an additional 34 digital castellated I.O. Finally, castellated IOs are available for key interfaces such as USB, the SAMD single wire debugger interface, and JTAG enable for bare metal FPGA uploads. Most of the digital IO connections on Evo are routed through the FPGA to and from the primary castellated IO. This provides the opportunity for developers to immediately capture inputs or drive outputs from the FPGA without requiring direct interaction with the SAMD controller. Of course, with the FPGA in simple pass-through mode, the SAMD can easily control the I.O. as if the FPGA were not even there. As always, the team here at Alorium promotes the use of custom FPGA logic for implementing key functionality that requires accelerated performance, multiple parallel interfaces, or highly deterministic behavior. This may include providing offload engines for the SAMD, pipelines between the SAMD and the board I.O., or functions that are completely contained in the FPGA and isolated from the SAMD altogether. 
like our other FPGA-based hardware, EVO M51 will support Alorium Technology-supplied pre-built FPGA images that target specific application use cases. In addition, designers will again have the option to develop their own custom logic blocks and integrate them into the top-level Max-10 FPGA design. Out of the box, EVO is programmable with Arduino just like many other boards based upon the SAMD51. So, writing and uploading firmware to the microcontroller is easy and familiar. In addition, EVO was specifically designed to support running CircuitPython, a version of Python created to run on small microcontrollers. CircuitPython is growing in popularity, and there's a steady increase in the developer community and number of hardware providers. We're hard at work finalizing the interface details between the SAMD and FPGA, and preparing for our initial production run of EVO M51 boards. We look forward to sharing more information and finer details soon. Okay, and don't forget, we're now putting these short URLs up, so if you go That's to right. digi.com, digi.com forward slash short, forward slash Z9MVNC, you'll be able to see it in the part numbers. That's right, and you can EVO pick up a dev board. And if they're not in stock, um, there was only a couple last I checked. Uh, just put some back order, they're getting more. There just weren't many made in the first run, uh, but they'll get another one to you in a week or two. Okay, we're signing MPI. Hi, on MPI.